Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This is the all new Air Hammer from Ingersoll Rand, the 135 Max. And that's significant because in a category like Air Hammers, brands aren't exactly coming out with a new one every couple of years, more like once a decade at the moment. And IR says this is the most powerful 401 shank air hammer to date, claimed to be both 15% more powerful than their previous models, and also getting the job done 15% faster than the leading competitor. And when you say leading competitor, everyone immediately goes to the Snap-on PH3050B, which has resulted in many saying, this is the new air hammer to beat the most powerful options off the tool truck, like that now $526 Snap-on and this Matco model. And realistically, that's all that's next in the crosshairs, as their existing long barrel air hammer, the 119 Max, we found to be pretty peppy. It's perhaps that very next step down from the tool truck options, but for 130, 160 bucks these days, which makes it one of the best buys out there in air hammers next to the Harbor Freight Chief, which by the numbers is essentially a Mac Tools with a worse trigger, at least from what we can tell. And in case you didn't notice, this thing is short, like really short. 10.25 inches with a truck attached, around one half inch shorter than the current 119 Max and the Snap-on, and a full inch shorter than the Chief. The downside is it's about 260, 270 bucks. So a full 100 slapped onto the current 119 Max. A viewer and now friend of the channel, Anthony, loaned us this one to see what it could do, but that's how much you'd be paying for the extra 15% helping of beans that it advertises but that still would be around half what the tool trucks sell theirs for, if true, making it sort of the savings of the century as there aren't exactly a lot of players at the top here. So let's find out. Our first test is called Max Power, the brand's suggested line pressure while the tool is running for five seconds up against the load cell we made because there didn't seem to be any power ratings for air hammers out there and we wanted a way to compare them. As numbers like 15% more sound a bit intangible and what's to stop brands really from just making that stuff up? Since creating this rig, more than a couple of big names in the industry have reached out asking if we would do testing for them or provide plans to make the same setup. But back to the action, up first is the Snap-on. Four thousand four hundred and seventy-seven PSI. Let's take a look at the current 119 Max. Three thousand nine hundred forty-six to beat. Okay, and now here is the new IR one thirty-five Max. Three thousand seven hundred twenty-three. Yep, and we do three tests as usual. This is the median. That's what it makes with the air pressures listed on the box. More tests to come. But when this thing first showed up, I had to double check that we had the right one and not some longish medium barrel air hammer. The stroke on this tool is three inches flat. The 119 Max was already at three and a half inches. Stroke alone doesn't determine an air hammer's capability, but it was sort of the old school trick many people used to determine which air hammer would likely be the most powerful by checking that spec. That's because force equals mass times acceleration. You can only make the bore of a 401 shank air hammer so big, so the backside of the piston inside is going to have X surface area, let's say the common three quarters of an inch. Now multiply that by the pounds per square inch of dynamic air pressure while running 90 PSI. That's around 40 pounds of force pushing this piston to accelerate it, but that piston doesn't accelerate instantly. You have to give it some runway. The longer the stroke you have, the more distance you afford the piston to accelerate, like running a 26 inch barrel versus a 20 inch barrel on a rifle, given a fixed type of powder charge. The longer stroke usually means less blows per minute on an air hammer as it has to sort of recycle that piston back and forth, but it also means a bigger boom. So seeing this thing looking as short as it was, I had my initial doubts. But that's some simple assumptions going on that many of our viewers make about these same tools in the comments. That stroke simply equals power. The PH3050B Snap-on, despite being an overall long tool, also has just a three inch stroke. 
So there's a lot you can do with the airports, valve bodies, and other things going on inside to make sure the air is flowing in and out as efficiently as possible. Which means when we increase air pressure coming up in the last test, those restrictions on models that do have them usually get penalized for that. Let's first take a look at the trigger feathering ability of these various models as the 135 Max claims to have a good one. Here's the current 119 Max. Five hundred and three. That's the best we could reliably manage on this tool. The average in this class is currently seven hundred sixty-four, so a bit better than average. And here's the snap-on. Just one hundred forty-two. That's very nice indeed. And here's the new one thirty-five max. Just 159, incredibly good, and a large improvement over the already decent 119 Max would be nearly indistinguishable in most cases from the Snap-on, so that's good company to keep for sure. Okay, last up, 150 PSI static shot pressure that drops to whatever each gun causes it to drop to, much like how you might be running things at work. Here's the Snap-on taking on the 119 Max. So yes, the snap-on with 5233 is both higher in peak and everywhere on the curve from the 119. That's sort of why we're gathered here today. The 119 Max is excellent really just for how close it already is compared to the $526 snap-on. This is how the new 135 Max does. Forty-nine, eighty-nine, about 5,000, and in person we experienced this as just a tad over the 119, but it's really closer to the snap-on here than the 119 Max looking at the curves. Here's how it does compared to a Harbor Freight Chief. And if you're sort of unaware the difference between a long, medium, and short barrel, Here's the difference between those $10 to $15 Harbor Freight models as well. This means, or at least it implies, the advancements IR made on this model come from mainly freer flowing internals. As you turn the pressure up, it makes more and more a lot like the snap-on does. Thanks to smart machine work inside that allows for that instead of simply using a longer stroke, which really I feel like they could have just done both a longer stroke and more freer flowing internals, just make a monster. But let's see what the rank chart thinks of things. Starting out below that 119 max, new 135 models runs are turned into points as 37 and 499 with the best number it could make being heavier weighted specifically on our air hammer ranking because the power of these tools aren't really advertised across brands anywhere. That comes out to 21,423 pounds of force generated against our load cell if you're curious. The difference between the max power run and the minimum trigger feathering run at the same air pressure is how points are awarded here in the form of 35.6. It's a shorter tool and made more power at its best and gets rewarded for that with 48.7 points here. For that power and size, it does cost noticeably more, so as a function of power and price, it earns just 16.5 points here. That totals 636.8, putting it right above the 119 Max and below the Snap-on, which I feel it does belong. We do rank heavily by power, but where else are you really going to see the power of these tools quantified? This new model is its not 15% more powerful from what we can measure than the 119 Max, Really, with just 90 PSI in the tank, they're about the same, or the new one's slightly less. But it is shorter, which pretty much no one is doing and is hard to achieve. So I feel they should have advertised this model as being basically a 119 Max power-wise, or a little bit better, in a smaller package, where in reality, I don't think they really touch on the size of this model at all. 
sort of a missed opportunity. There will no doubt be a scenario where this fits where a 119 doesn't, and this will still be bringing the beans when it does, if you're willing to pay for the luxury. Until then, or another model comes out to best these, the 119 Max is still a very good buy today. Appreciate you joining us for this one. We make episodes like these at least every Friday, and thanks for watching.